the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, God bless you. I'm excited about this quick study. I mean, it's probably gonna be like two or three uh, segments, right? But the whole point is that I want to focus on the teaching of Christ. And the fact is that we are supposed to be believers. And as believers, we are believers in the doctrine and the teaching of Christ. That means we don't do the steal, kill, and destroy. We do the things that are acceptable in the will of God. And, and I, I brought this up because I see so many times people want to, to look at church history and say, I don't want to be a Christian because of the history of the church. And they have a valid position, don't they? Because a tree is known by its fruit. You can call yourself a Christian, but it's your actions, your deeds, is what's coming out of your mouth. And if it's discrimination and hate, if steal, kill, and destroy is coming out of your mouth for the whole purpose of putting other people down, you are not a Christian and you need to say that. You need to stop offering. Stop lying. Stop putting the, you know, trying to cover yourself as a Christian. You want to be a Christian, you have a choice. You have a choice. So choose. Choose life for them. But if you want to choose life, that applies for not only you, but everybody around you, whether they're black, white, or brown, or whatever. You're supposed to love them. And that's what this teaching is about. So I consider it a quick teaching, but yes, if I take two or three slides, A, B, and C. But the whole purpose is we need to learn to love one another. I put down here, this is the title that I have here. And I'm on one computer, so I have to use it this way. But it said, when, and I've left the title, that word out did, when did the Christian doctrine, or when the Christian doctrine added, steal, kill, and destroy? And that scripture I'm coming from is John 10, 10. When, when did steal, kill, and destroy come as a part of the gospel? If you want eternal life, when did you accept, steal, kill, and destroy? You didn't. You shouldn't. Because that's not the doctrine. Amen. So I put that down as a title. Because it's important for you to ask that question. Why is it acceptable to steal, kill, and destroy? Why is it acceptable to go against even the Ten Commandments? Why is it acceptable to go against the six things that God hates? Yea, seven is an abomination to him. Why? There is no excuse. And I'm going to give you in this study, you're going to talk, you're going to see historical references starting all the way back in the third century of steal, kill, and destroy. This doctrine of militarism, this doctrine of hate, this doctrine of stealing, this doctrine of killing, it goes all the way back starting in the third century because man corrupted the gospel and it brought it all the way up to 2023 of people sitting there doing steal, kill, and destroy opposed to loving one another. That's what God asked you to do. Read, and I'm encouraging you, please, every individual, read the New Testament. Study the New Testament. I'm not telling you not to study the Old Testament. I'm telling you to study the New Testament if you want to call yourself a Christian. And if you want to study to call yourself a Christian, then you go by the gospel that Christ taught. Those letters in the New Testament all based on the foundation of the gospel and they should reflect on the gospel and that's what i'm trying to tell you if you want to be a christian be a christian don't be uh don't be a world 
pleaser or a man pleaser, but be a Christian, be a follower of Christ. Learn what it means to be a Christian so people can see your light shine. Your light shine is not going to be from bigotry. Your light shine is not going to be from hate. Your light shining is not, your light of Christ is not shining through you based on uh, you acting like a bad character, an evil character, discriminating character. Your character is based on the teaching of Christ. So I hope you enjoyed the seconds getting ready to come up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to make comments. You want to make comments so we can continue to stay on track. But just remember, Jesus, Yeshua, is our personal Lord and Savior. And he is the way. We all should preach the gospel pointing toward Christ, not pointing toward our uh, ministries or, uh, or uh, whatever group you think you are representing. It should be toward Christ. And if you do and to love one another, you'll make a difference in this world, man. God bless you. I hope you love the segment. And I'll see you when I see you. God bless. Bye-bye. Not the image of man. Not the expectation of man. I was sitting there saying, when did this stuff start? I was looking at the uh, Wikipedia. And I, I was looking at the title was a uh, sectarian balance among Christians. It says right here, Secretarian violence among Christians is a recurring phenomenon in which Christians engage in a form of communal violence known as secretarian violence. This violence can often be attributed to differences of religious belief between sects of Christianity. That's secretarianism. Secretarian violence among Christians was common. Look at that, now common. Now, this is after Christ has passed and rose again that the body of Christ was starting to form. But yet, you can see secondary violence among Christians was common, especially during the late iniquity and the years surrounding the Protestant Ref Reformation, in which a German monk named Martin Luther disputed some of the Catholic Church's practices particularly the doctrine of indulgence, which is not in Christ's teaching as well. It was crucial in the creation of a new set of Christianity known as Protestant. So there, and, and when, when the church was starting to form, the church was constantly doing uh, all types of uh, violence toward one another. Look at this. Is it during the latter half of the Renaissance when secondary related violence was most common? Once again, you hear the word most common? So, well after the formation or the death and resurrection of Christ, somewhere it was added to do violence. In other words, this was an introduced man doctrine into the teaching of Christianity. And the problem with that is, Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. It says right here, conflicts like the European War of Religion or Dutch, Dutch revolts ravaged Western Europe. In France, there were the French War of Religion and in the United Kingdom, anti-Catholic hate was heightened by the gunpowder plot of 1605. And while second-term violence may seem like an archaic footnote today, secondary violence among Christians still persists in the modern world with groups such as the KKK, which probably used the Bible. And that's where I watch out for you said the Bible. You knew, you knew if you're Christians, your main, your doctrine comes from the New Testament. But they use the Bible along with their handbook, right, to espouse this teaching, perpetuating violence among Catholics. The earliest period when widespread secretary violence occurred among Christians was the period of the late antiquity third century, look at that, third century. 
This is 2023. This is the 20th century, or 21st century now, right? But it went, goes back to this, about, in other words, this doctrine of violence was added starting toward around the third century CE to the eighth century CE. Events like the wars, like the wars would follow the council of the Caldonians and Constantine persecuting of the Aryan uh, caused late inequity to be considered one of the worst periods of time for a person to be a Christian. In other conflicts such as the uh, Abigini, uh, Al Big Jemison Crusade led to wars with over one million casualties. So what I'm trying to tell you, if you're talking all over to the third century, this doctrine of violence is something that we grew up with today that started around the third century outside contrary to the teaching of Christ. And most people are taught today to do violence in the name of Christ, but that's not the teaching of Christ. That's not even the gospel of Christ. And I'm saying this to every last one of you, you read the Bible for yourself. You will you have ministers who basically follow this teaching of violence, steal, kill, and destroy. Look at this right here. Second term violence of Christian also became prominent during the Renaissance, 14th century to 17th century CE, especially in Western Europe. In France, there were incidents of violence against a religious sect known as the Huguenots, who followed the teaching of the religious reformer John Calvin. These events included, but were not limited to the ma to massacres of Vassy, which subsequently started the French War of Religion, and St. Bonomi Day Massacre. In Ireland, such of the events that occurred during the Con Cromwellian conquest of Ar Ireland were so hideous that they can be classified as war crime. Christians? I'm telling you, people want to be Christians, but they, they've been dealing with seeing Christians who have been infected by false teaching dealing with Christianity. Because like I said, I challenge every last one of you, go to the New Testament yourself. And first go with the four Gospels and see where Christ taught anybody to do the things we've just been reading about so far. You won't find it. You won't find it. I challenge you to do it. Go look at it. Look at Christ's teaching and see what was he focusing on. Love, forgiveness, mercy, and grace. In the 19th century, U.S. anti-Catholic hate was salient due to the influx of Catholic immigrants who came to the U.S. from Europe. At that time, the U.S. was still in the infancy as a nation, and it was dominated by white English-speaking Protestants who traced their ancestry back to Northern Europe. So the disparity between the non-English speaking multiracial Catholics who came from various parts of Europe and the white nativist Protestants majority led to discrimination against the former by the latter. Interesting, right? Once again, this added doctrine of steal, kill, and destroy could be traced all the way back to the third century. And that's why you find it common to speak of doing bad things, instigating bad things toward people because they were indoctrinated, contaminated way back to the third century. And we gotta watch these type of things, people. That's why we said a Christian needs to read the scripture for themselves. Do what Christ did. You need to be a term saying, what would Christ do? But that's what we're talking about now. Do what Christ said you should do. Look at this right here. 
this dealing with this is more something personal to me is dealing with the slavery it said they doom diverses english until different which that's what it means and the papal bull issued in 18 june 1452 by pope nicholas the fifth it authorized a fossil the fifth of portugal to conquer the Saxarians and pagans and consign them to perpetual servitude. Then Pope Catholic III reiterated the bull in 1456 with intersectaria, not to be confused with Alexander IV bull of the same title, renewed by Pope Sixtus IV in 1481 and Pope Leo the in 1514 with the Percellus Denotus, 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 excuse me, I don't read as well on that. In English, especially the description, the concept of the consignment of exclusive fears of influence to certain nation states was extended to the Americas in 1493 by Pope Alexander VI with, let me see here, to conform the, the Portuguese slave, I mean trade, King Alfonso V appealed to Pope Nicholas uh, V support, seeking the moral authority, we read that last week, <laughs> of the church for his monopoly. Uh, and in 1552 was addressed by Alfonso V and conceived Portugal's right to attack, steal, kill, or to attack, conquer, and subjugate Caesarians and pagans. We grant you by these present documents with our apocalyptic authority. Look at that. This is somebody operating as a head of a Christian church and said full and free permission to invade, not in the scripture, to search, not in the scriptures, to search out, excuse me, capture, subjugate the Caesarean and pagans and any other unbeliever, an enemy of Christ. Look at that, enemy of Christ. Wherever they may be, as well as their kingdom, duchies, counties, principalities, and other property, and reduce their persons into perpetual slavery. And you will not find that in the scriptures, not in the New Testament. And that's what we got to watch out for when people, man, assume an authority to, to just tell somebody that. These people are the enemy of Christ. Find in Christ's teaching the enemy of Christ. You got the Antichrist, I mean the anti-anointing. But to sit there and say, we man can identify who the enemy of Christ. Well, I think because if you are a believer, then you wouldn't have wrote this. You you because it's like, what are you reconciling that with? And see, Catholic calls them, they got dogma, which means they feel that they still have the ability to continue to teach and write new additions to the scriptures. But the reality is, that's why we have the New Testament, is to follow the teaching of Christ. But that's what I want you to make sure you understand. You know, the scripture of Romans 10, 9, 10 says, that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in the heart that God is raised for the dead, thou shalt be saved. Most people profess the crucifixion and the resurrection, resurrection, resurrection of Christ, but they seem to forget this part about if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, meaning Jesus is Lord. And he's the one that tells you what to do when you get his instructions by the leading of the Holy Spirit and by the gospel. You test the Spirit by the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's why I tell you to study to show yourself approved unto God.
10 10 said for with the heart mean with your spirit man believes unto righteousness look at this with the mouth confesses made to salvation Conf confessing who's lord in your life you know mom matthew excuse me it's 7 21 to 23 i want you to understand this because this is important this is critical for you as a believer not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, send into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in that name, in that name cast out devils, in that name done wonderful works? And then I will profess unto you, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye who work iniquity. How many people? I think and they could be able to go to and how many people already died because their death is judgment. How many people already died? And they're gonna sit there and say, Lord, I did your will. And he can say, I never knew you. Because you never took time to study my word. You never took time to read my word, my teaching. I gave you a teaching. And yet you follow the will of men. You're mindful of the things of man. You sought to please man. You didn't seek to please me. You didn't seek to please the Father. You didn't seek to hear and be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit because you would have never got the doctrine of steal, kill, and destroy. You would have got the doctrine of love. Look at this right here, and then we're going to kind of wrap it up real quick. I want to put in First Galatians. This I say then, walk in the spirit and should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other, so you cannot do the things you would. But if you be led to the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh shall manifest. Look at that, the works of the flesh. This is where you'll find still killing the short. The works of the flesh are manifested in these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, various immolation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelry, and such like, which I tell you before, as I also told you in time past, that they would do such things. Listen to that now. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I think it's not pleasing man that's going to give you eternal life. It's not following church dogma that's contrary to Christ that's going to get you into the kingdom of God. It's following the teaching of Christ. He's not teaching to steal, kill, and destroy. Galatians 5.22 said, But the works of the, of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and such. There's a law. See, nobody going to arrest you for love. Nobody going to arrest you for goodness. Nobody going to arrest you for faithfulness or patience. But they will arrest you for when you do these other things. And this script I wanted to wrap it up with because I because I'm trying to say where you got this doctrine of hey when you got the doctrine in the scriptures it says for this is a message that ye heard from the beginning this is first John chapter 3 starting at verse 11 but this is a message you heard from the beginning that you should love one another not as Cain who was that wicked one that slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you, you know that we are passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abides in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a and you know that no murderer has eternal life about us in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because we laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hateth this world goods, and seeth his brother have need, 
to the he who has this world's good. You have it. And sees his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. And if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if your heart condemn us not, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God that whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments, not man's commandments. And those and do those things that are pleasing in his sight, not man's sight. That's what I'm talking about. It's so important for us to learn to teach the gospel. Verse 23. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son. Jesus, or Yeshua, which is the Hebrew name, and love one another as he gave us commandment to love one another. And he that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abides in us by the Spirit which he has given us. See, he has given us a spirit of love. He given us the Holy Spirit, who is the comforter, not the torturer, and not for us to advocate torture, not for us to advocate hurting, not to advocate discrimination. We're supposed to do the teaching of Christ. I'm trying to talk to you because the fact is, your eternal life is in jeopardy if you choose to not follow Christ. Because if you follow the will of man, the will of man is definitely to show that he is willing to do bad things. And that's not the calling that he gave us to be, man. Hey, I just wanted to give you this. We can continue to chew on these scriptures and chew on the will and the doctrine of Christ so that we can start putting aside the doctrine of man and be mindful of the things of God instead of the man, being mindful of the things of man. Do we make mistakes? Every last one of us. Have we all arrived? None of us. If you have, God bless you. But the point is that we do make mistakes, but we should at least focus on loving one another Instead of condemning one another. That's, 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 nobody's saying be perfect. But we try to strive to at least operate in love so we can do this well. Amen? All right. God bless you. I hope you enjoy these scriptures. And I hope that we can continue to build on these scriptures and start talking to your pastor. Start talking to your fellow believers and saying, this is what the word says. So that when you run across people who want to steal, kill, and destroy, you can sit there and let them know, I am not going your way. I'm going his way. And that's all I'm asking you to do is go toward Christ. Follow his teaching. Operate in love, not hate. Because you're not called to hate. You're not called to preach hate. You're not called to preach steal, kill, and destroy. You're called to love one another. And it doesn't matter about the color of your skin or where you came from, whose money you got, or anything else. You're called to love one another. And I guarantee you, most people want to be around people who are loving, not people that hate. Not people that want to keep some people in the gutter just because of the color of skin. Because it's not the output. It's the input. 
you know, Paul even said, in my flesh dwell is no good thing. So don't put your eternal life on the flesh. Put it in your spirit. Receive Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, and let him be Lord. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. I guarantee you, all the way from third century to 2023, you sit there and say, yes, bad doctrine has fallen and crept into the church, into the ministries. Our job as believers, as ambassador of Christ, is to restate the teaching of Christ and understand, let people know he's a, John 14, 6, he the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. Amen. God bless you. I hope you enjoy the rest of this week and I'll see you when I see you. And don't forget to subscribe. Amen. Don't forget to do that because that's important. All right. God bless you and I'll check you later. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, let's do the count. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed that study. And I want you to meditate and chew on it. I do want to encourage it again. Study the Word. Study the New Testament. Teach the New Testament for yourself. And understand you need to have, must have, a personal relationship with God. We don't need a relationship that's going to separate us and just because we get approval by man, man can't get you into heaven. Man can't get you into eternal life. You can ask your pastor now. You can ask your deacon. You can ask your associate pastor. Can you give me eternal life? And you know the answer will be, no, I can't. But if you study the word of God and make Christ Lord, you make a difference, amen? All right, I hope you enjoyed it. That was just my quick closing. Uh, for all the videos, we'll probably have an A, B, C. I don't think we have a D. Um, but the point is, please listen to the studies at your leisure. And don't forget that Yeshua is Lord. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I appreciate those who have subscribed. And I look forward to continuing to just put out products that focus on us pointing toward Christ, not man. Amen. God bless you. And I'll see you when I see you. Rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.